Hello guys and welcome to the Grand Tour game. Hope you guys are well. If you guys could be awesome and leave a like, leave your comments below. Are you guys excited for the Grand Tour game? I know I am. This is Amazon's first ever game. I loved, of course, the old Top Gear. I loved the Grand Tour. I love James May, Richard Hammond and Jeremy Clarkson. So I'm excited for this game. Um, I don't know how it's going to work yet. I've got no idea. I know the on the 18th of January, the third season comes out of the Grand Tour. I know there's a link there, but yeah, I don't know what I'm going to be playing today. I've got no idea. Right, so apparently it begins with season one, episode one, and then we gradually go through the seasons. And the other two seasons are still currently locked, so let's see what happens. Oh yes, we drive with Jeremy Clarkson. Love it. It is mighty. It is mighty. I must be honest. This this episode was Speed legendary. Is the answer. Speed is always the answer. I just remember watching it. I was like, oh my god, this is so cool. He got kicked out of the BBC, kicked out of Top Gear, and everyone was like, what's gonna happen? And then Amazon saves the day. Whoop whoop. That was a very tidy line. So, it looks a lot better than I expected. The graphics look actually not too bad. Obviously, this is a 12 pound title, or like a 20 pound, $20 title. That's not a AAA. And it looks pretty impressive for that price. Got a gold. Yes. Scene number one.
that was the Hot House Flowers, and now look what we have here. He was born. He was born in 1836. And he was fired by Car Magazine, fired by Auto Car Magazine, fired by Scotland on Sunday, and somehow he managed to get fired by a Volvo dealership. Probably for driving too slowly, ladies and gentlemen, James Bay! Thank you, thank you, you're very kind. And, ladies and gentlemen, you probably can't see him from the back. But, I assure you, he is here. He was fired by Radio York fired by Radio Leeds, and fired by Radio Lancashire, it's Richard Hammond! Hello, hello, thank you, thank you. And ladies and gentlemen, over here, he's, he's basically a shaved ape in a shirt, and he, Technically, is the only one of us never to be fired by anyone. It's Jeremy Clarkson! Thank you so much. Anyway, we are all car journalists. And we have spent the last 20 years... Being fired? Yes. But we have poured everything we know, everything we care about, into this show. Everything. And coming up now is a small montage of what you can expect over the next 12 weeks. Are we ready, gentlemen? I d honestly, I don't know. <laughs> Is that the size of the drop or what's happened to his... You're looking at magnificence! Help! This is bad! James says we've got to stop the fuel. Ah! I hate you! Yeah, he doesn't like it. Maybe leaking slightly. What a moron. You sound my limousine! I've lost one of my nose tampons! This is not a particularly cultural thing to do. I don't like the smell of tire smoke in the evening. James is falling dignity in that, is there? I'm going to prove that point because we're kicking off with this. <laughs> yes, I agree. <laughs> the thing is, though, various supercar makers have now taken the sort of polar bear friendly technology from a Prius 
and they're now using it to create raw, naked speed. Now, I say the best of these hybrid hypercars is the mad, swivel-eyed McLaren P1. Whereas Richard Hammond, who's wrong... I'm not wrong. He is, because he says the best is actually the rather boring Porsche 918. It's not boring! Yes, it is. It isn't. Mm. It isn't. But whatever, we decided to meet up with the cars and settle this once and for all. Oh, we're going to drive a P1 with Jeremy Clarkson. Love it. Absolutely love it. Oh, oh there he may. That was not good. That was not good. Yeah, there he may indeed. So silver for second place. Gold for first place. We are going at such a rate of knots. So this was the episode where they wanted to find out uh, what was the quickest hypercar. The 9... 1.8, the P1, or the LaFerrari. Ah, I get the better line there. Uh, eventually, I guess we find out. And it's, um, I was actually quite surprised when I found out the, uh, the results. I thought it was always going to be the P1. Bit of a spoiler there, I guess. Oh, this is not going well. Managed to recover a little bit there. 65%. Here we go. This might be our chance. Hammond! There we go. Squeezed on past. Hammond does not sound happy. <laughs> I wish there was like actual subtitles for the races. Um, that would be nice. But I mean, I put them on. There we go. First place. The Done. The we chose for this titanic duel was Portugal. Specifically, the international racetrack of the Algarve. When we arrived, mechanics from Porsche and McLaren pounced on our cars, fettling them for what was to come. Soon, the McLaren and the Porsche were ready for some shakedown laps. And for these, we decided we'd drive each other's cars. The 918. Look at this car. Probably my least favourite of the... Um of the two cars, but I can appreciate it. Oh, it's drifting, okay. Press Straight square. Away, I can tell you that this doesn't have the brutality or the savagery of the McLaren. Because it has rear wheel steering and four wheel drive, it feels altered, it feels secure and safe. And Does it feel safe? <laughs> I just don't really like the look of this car. I don't know why that is. I'm sure some of you guys absolutely love it. What the drift, by the way. On point. So I've got a 1,500. I might start drifting a little bit more. So I'm going to run out of track soon. Unbelievable grip. Still only... Okay, we're close, we're close. I think we got it. Yes, we have a gold. So far, the challenges have been fairly doable. <laughs> keep going, keep going. Keep drifting. What am I going to get? Almost 2,000 in the end. Not bad. Not bad. This is brilliant. Absolutely brilliant. Hammond looks a little bit scared. <laughs> Petrified. Jesus. This is frightening. That's what it is. We're off. Have a clean lap. With no screaming. Okay. So I could go really slow, can I? But 
and that's boring, isn't it? That's real boring. So, I'm going to be completely honest. I feel like McLaren is very British. A little bit boring, some might say. But for some reason, this car is just an absolute monster. I don't know why that is. Um, but yeah, it, it's an absolute monster. Uh, there's a lot of questions probably about this game. Uh, no, there's no like assist you can turn off and on. It's it's a set gameplay and that's it. Uh, there's no multiplayer at the moment, but it is coming. Uh, you, ca you can't drive with a steering wheel, I don't believe. So, yes. Oh, no! Oh, Damn it. Sake. I've got a silver. Ah. That's probably talking too much. That's annoying. One little mistake. Oh. And the graphics actually look quite good. I remember seeing the trailers and I was like, this game doesn't look that great. I thought like they'd probably made a decent step forward since then. Put some real work into it. And it doesn't look half bad for £12 or $20. It looks alright. You naughty little car. <laughs> Jesus. His eyes are coming out. This recalibrates your mind. I didn't think anything could be as exciting as that Porsche, but this, this is. What a car. I love it. Well? This is rubbish. I was just thinking exactly the same about this. Where are you? This was boring me to death. It was like being stuck in a Victorian woman's novel. But I'd rather that than being stuck in a telephone box with a panicking gorilla. Rubbish. It was trying to kill me. I mean, it's no, trying to hurt me. It wants to hurt oh, me. That's why I like it. Razor blade in the hands of a surgeon, sickle in the hands of a drunk peasant. Schooner of sherry, absinthe. Hi. What are you doing here? I am here because, gentlemen, I have in the back of that lorry something that will make your McLaren and your Porsche look like lumps of yesteryear. Remember the last time a car or indeed any sort of thing gave me a fizz like the Ferrari, the Ferrari. Here we go, three, two, one. It's with a clock. Go fast and stay on the track to give him ultimate fizz. Okay. <laughs> what sort of fizz are we talking about right now? I'm not sure I want to know, to be honest. I don't want to know at all, actually. I guess that. That stomach fizz, I, I, I hope. Fingers crossed. Got a bronze already. I think we just hit a silver. Yeah, La Ferrari does look. Oh, incredible. Such a good looking car. So I believe Amazon has been uh, poaching, I guess, developers from other studios. They want to put a big dent in this game in, uh, in the gaming world, eventually. And they're willing to invest, so you can appreciate that. We've got gold already, guys. One of the more easier scenes. Handles really nicely, actually. Oh. Yeah, I think it's quite a unique handling game. It's obviously very arcadey. The physics are a little bit strange. It's a little bit like I'm floating, but I think for the price, again, I'm going to keep saying that, I think the price is perfect for this game. If you like the Grand Tour, or Top Gear, or the old Top Gears, this, I believe, will you might like this. The other two. Oh, man. <laughs> James was obviously talking nonsense, but there's no getting around the fact that these three cars take automotive science to a new level. They use the latest green technology to squeeze as much speed as possible from every molecule of fuel. A 
As a result, they're all capable of blasting way past 200 miles an hour, whilst producing fewer harmful emissions than a family saloon. What we have here, then, are three incredible machines which, at a stroke, have made the traditional supercar look wooden and old-fashioned. Welcome, everyone, to the Hypercar Holy Trinity. To have these cars on this track, unreal, unreal. Try and get into first place. Oh, what are these? Are they like little gadgets or something? Like powers? Oh, be a clash in there. I braked a little bit too much. Wow, James is quick today. What is going on? This is clearly a game. Oh, come on. Look at that. What is that? That's a big distraction. James struggled. So I do have a boost available. Which I should have used already. Oops. Boost! There we go. Come on, Richard Hammond. Please don't crash. You always do. Oh, wow. Yeah, there's always this big question mark. What was the quickest car between these three cars? And it was so hard to get them together. They tried so hard in top gear and they couldn't do it. And then they did it. They did it for season one of the Grand Tour. Oh my God. Huh. Nice some candy floss. <laughs> Whoopsie! Yes. Come on, Richard. Look at the speed on that. Two hundred miles per. I don't miss a gadget then. Oh wow, that didn't go well. <laughs> oh, Richard Hammond crashed again. Let's try and get a gadget. Yes, candy fog. That's a candy floss. That's clearly not candy floss. Oh no. It's James May! Not a chance. Oh no. So quick. Apologies for my driving. <laughs> it's a different handling game for sure. It takes a little bit of getting used to. And James May is really putting the pressure on. Fog did not slow him down. Ouch! James May. He's violent all of a sudden. He's desperate to win. Couple more corners. Come on! Don't go wide, don't go wide. Can I block him off? Oh, the P1. First place. Yes! Did it! We could have played out there all day, but before we ended up in a three million pound crash, we decided to start the tests to see which of the cars was best. I came up with the first one mainly to annoy Gate Crasher May. Let's make the first test a drag race using Electrical power only. Good idea. No, it isn't a good idea. Why not? Because you can't drive the Ferrari on electrical power only. No! No, but of course you can't, because it's it's a curse system like a Formula One car. It's got a V12 engine and an electric motor, but they're all integrated. They work together all of the time. You can't separate them. You should have thought about that, shouldn't you? Bad planning. With James reduced to the role of onlooker, we lined up the P1 and the 918 on the start line. But then, instead of revving the petrol engines, we shut them down. This could be a very slow race. <laughs> very slow. Perfect start, though. Come on! There we go. We did it. First place.
<laughs> that face. Who, who won that? I th it was me, wasn't it? Yeah, but it's not important, though, is it? Is it not? No, it's just not relevant. Right, right. In a drag race, it's irrelevant which car gets there first. Yeah, yours is the better milk float. <laughs> Back in the pits, Hammond had an idea for the next test. We've got to drive to the hotel, yeah? yeah? It's about an hour away, and it gives us a chance to see what they're like on the road. That's a good point. Real world. That is a good point. I can't do that. I can't... Well, I can't drive the Ferrari on the road. Why? Well, it's not registered. It is, it's got number plates. No, no, they're just, that's just pretend number plates. If they register it, it becomes second hand and they have to pay the tax. That's why it came in a lorry. So you can't drive it on the road either? Nobody can drive it. It's not road legal. Yet. Oh, no. Mate, that's... Oh, oh that is so, such a shame. It's an hour of... Oh, sorry, James. That is, that's really a rotten bit of luck because you've come a long way from Italy. Soon, Richard and I were enjoying the world's best ever commute. It's time to race home, back to bed, in my 918. Oh my god! Ouch. Not the best start in the world. Oops. Come on, 918! This might be the hardest challenge yet. There's the P1. Don't seem to get in that close. Get out of the way, Clarkson! There we go. Oh, get a little bit bashy bashy. It's gonna cost a lot of money to fix. Yeah, we are just grinding right now. Yeah, absolutely grinding. He is not letting up, is he? Sorry, sorry. Oh! Not there, not at all. Oh, oh, oh. It's closing the gap. It was a silver. Come on, accelerate. Oh, we've got to go around the corner. No! Oh. 70. I was breaking at the end there as well. A silver. Lovely. <laughs> In oh, comparison. You're all right. You're all right in Italian. Yes, 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 yes. Later on in part two, when these two have stopped dreaming of idiotic and irrelevant tests that it can't take part in, we shall see. We've got to tell everyone about our track. Yes, we have one. This is the sort of place where you can drive cars at speeds that you can do on the road, but only if you want to go to prison afterwards. What, like 38 miles an hour? Well, 39, maybe even 40 from time to time. Now, uh, we were hoping that we could bring it round the world with us, like the tent, uh, but unfortunately it's too heavy. <laughs> and, as you're about to see, too bitey. This is it. It's not a race circuit. It's not an airfield. It's not a road. What it is, is brilliant and fast and extremely dangerous. It even looks dangerous on a map because as you can see, it's the exact same shape as the Ebola virus. Right, time now to show you what a lap looks like. And to do that, we've got a bit of a performance benchmark, a Ferrari 488. Take it away. Take it away. The Ebola drone. The Grand Tour track. So called because it is 
isn't straight. I think that's might be the first time this has ever been in the game. In any game, I mean. It's not in Fulza. It's not in any game at all. That wasn't great. Your name here because there's no advertising and they want advertising. Damn it! That was not smooth, that wasn't great. I mean, this is my first go, so. There's no runoff area, it's just woods. Yeah, woods and cars. Don't go. Uh. We've called this section Old Lady's House because it's right next to a house oh, it's where an old lady lives. Get so stiff. Left right, or you'll crash into a cage full of electricity. Final 90 left right as well, or you'll run into a field of sheep. Just got a gold there. So, trees, animals, a house, electricity, and because it's in England, usually quite a lot of moisture in the air. It really is the most dangerous track anywhere in the world. The car I've selected for my first lap of the Ebola drone is this. The BMW M2. Let's give it a go. Good to know, Jeremy Clark. So I've got a drift. Oh, whoops. I didn't realise. I thought it was um, all about pure, pure speed. Apparently not. Oh, that was a drift. I'll do six. Oh, whoops. <laughs> Whoopsie doodles. Silver now. Yeah, I wish I knew it was a drift at the start. I was on the assumption it was all about speed. Clearly, it's not that just about speed. Oh, gold though. There we go. Oh, done. Ooh, a bit close. A little bit close for comfort. Was designed to trip cars up. There are fast corners, slow corners. Drifty corners and bumps. It's hard on the tires. It's hard on the brakes. It's hard on the engine. It's point and squirt and bark and yelp. It is vicious. But there is nothing here which has flummoxed the M2. This thing is an absolute masterpiece. Like I said, it is. The best M car BMW's ever made. You may think it's mad to suggest the cheapest M car is the best, but look at it this way. This track is a lot cheaper than Silverstone, and I know which one I'd rather drive round. This right at our track, yeah. there's trees, mm -hmm. animals, moisture, yeah. electricity, a house, and an unexploded bomb. Yeah, <laughs> like I said, it's the most dangerous track in the world. Honestly, it makes Imola look like a duvet. Yeah. It really, honestly, it does. It anyway, does. All the cars that we test at the Ebola drone will do a timed lap, and to make sure it's a completely level playing field, they will all be driven by the same racing driver. Yeah. Some How clever is that? Now, <laughs> thing is, Amazon, okay, insisted that the racing driver in question should be from this side of the pond. So we went to something called NASCAR, <laughs> and we found one, and we shipped him to England, and then we introduced him to the complicated procedure which involves turning right. <laughs> He's called Mike Skinner, but we know him simply as the American. Right, oh, there he is. Looking utterly bewildered. 
I'm pretty sure this guy's already been replaced for, I think, season two, actually. <laughs> he did, yeah, it just didn't work. Like, he was not funny. I didn't like him at all, actually. Um, no offense, Americans, it's not, that's not the reason. It was just him. So he got replaced. I don't know who got, who did he get replaced by? I don't actually know. Can we get a gold? That's the question. It's a bit early and then also a bit late at the same time. Don't know quite how that works, but that's just, yeah, the magic of skill. Come on. 60%. The American. This, this section's so tricky in this game. Some of the cars are quite stiff. Ooh. Go, 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 go. That was, that was actually pretty smooth. Like 10 seconds left. No. Oh, I had to hesitate there. Oh, no. I was so close. I screwed up at the end. Damn it. To make sure that the M2 uh, wasn't on sort of the lap board all by itself, we got the American to put uh, we, to put some other benchmark cars. Well, we call them benchmark cars. He calls them communist. Um, <laughs> around the track to see what's what. There they all are. Look. Now it's time to see where the M2 goes on that board. Let's have a look. Let's put it on. Oh. <laughs> It's, it's I think it's the best M car they've ever made. <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness. Yeah, look, I prefer it to all the others that are quicker than it. It's whiz. Yes, it's got It's definitely the one you should have if you want one that's slower oh, than all the other M cars. It's, it's better. It's only yeah. too. It's quicker than a Civic. Yeah. <laughs> If you had a choice of M cars, if you lined them all up and said, yeah. I'd like the fastest, it wouldn't be that one. Shut up. Better in every single, <laughs> better in every single way. Stop you said, saying you said that. I don't care what. Have you driven one? You, you know what? It's, it's a amazing, fabulous car. You've driven one. It's a brilliant car. It really honestly is. This week, this week, we are trying to find out which of the new breed of hybrid hypercars is the best. Yes, on day one at the track in Portugal, we established that the McLaren P1 is a mentalist, <laughs> that the Porsche 918 is very good milk float, and that the Ferrari, the Ferrari, can do nothing at all. Some of that is true. But now, day two. We began by lining up the three most exciting cars on the planet for the drag race of all drag racers. Naturally, this meant engaging launch control, which in the McLaren takes about a fortnight. I have to have the drive train in track mode, the aero package in sport mode so that the rear end squats when I set off and gives me more traction. I have to have the DRS button pressed with my thumb to keep the rear wing open, which reduces drag, obviously. Launch control in the Porsche, left foot on the brake, hard, right foot on the throttle, hard, light goes green, left foot off brake, ding! Launch button pressed for two seconds, left foot on brake, right foot on throttle, press launch control, mash the throttle, within four seconds, release the brake. Three seconds later, I have full boost and I have to set off then within three seconds or the entire system disengages. I'm going to get this wrong, just so you know. I've got a lot to do in here. It does sound very complicated. I don't know why it has to be that complicated. I like um, the 918 yeah, style of doing it. Seems to be wait, working. There's the wing. Time for the ultimate drag race. Three, two, one. Good start. Very good start. Second place. First place. Yes, James, mate. 
Well done. With that sorted, it was time to bring in a racing driver to see which of our cars could do the fastest lap. Our resident American said he wasn't interested because all three cars are probably communist. So instead, we went for a Belgian chap who's done Formula One and Formula E, Jerome D'Ambrosio. <laughs> took the cars out to get a sense of how they handled. <laughs> and when he'd finished, we were interested to hear his professional opinion. La McLaren, une voiture, je pense peut-être la plus difficile à piloter. Très facile de faire une erreur. C'est vraiment une voiture de grand garçon. Il faut faire attention et, et donc pas facile de faire un tour. Je pense qu'elle est un peu moins efficace. At this point, word euh, reached us that Jeremy was taking ouais, liberties with the subtitling machine. <laughs> donc c'est. Euh... So we moved on to the big event, the timed laps. Once the mechanics had finished their preparations, the three speed traps were activated. And the Ferrari, the Ferrari, took its place on the start line. Look how good it looks there. It does look pretty good, doesn't it? <laughs> I'm not going to lie. So this is all about hitting those speed traps as quick as humanly possible. And we've got to try and get an average, I believe, of 130 miles an hour. Don't break! I don't think it matters about the overall time of the lap. It's purely down to the speed traps. I believe. 156. Speed! I felt pretty quick. I'm not going to lie. I'm not going to lie. What a car. I, st I still think the 918 is probably my least favourite of all three cars. It's very hard for me to decide between the LaFerrari and the P1. The P1 might just might just nip in front, maybe. No! That's not going to help, is it? Still okay, though. Okay, good. <laughs> We're fine. Average of 134 miles an hour despite the crash, so that's good. Full of gold. These are the, uh, I believe, the last few scenes. There might be like a finale race. I don't know. I think that's already been done. I don't think so, actually. It's all based on the speed tracks. All three of the cars. Done. Thank you very much, James. You want to go and get a cup of tea? Well, we've warmed the track. Next, it was the turn of the Porsche 918. How much faster will it go because of the stripes, do you think? Much. Stripes always help. It's it's a known fact in the motor industry. Stripes mean speed. Pure speed. Let's do it. All about the speed cameras again. Exactly the same targets. That's how similar these cars are in terms of speed. They're weirdly similar. Like, it's just kind of crazy. Three different manufacturers three different ways of doing the whole hybrid thing but yeah they're all very very close very close if you guys have got a favorite um, let me know also if you guys could be awesome and if you guys want to see season two or season three of the grand tour game leave a like on this episode leave a comment be supportive because i think amazon might take down the video or at least claim it or something because yeah I mean it's playing actual episodes uh, actual music as well oh uh, not good ooh 133 banging into that wall in that corner bugging me yeah it's, it's weird I don't know how Amazon's going to react to me uploading a let's play of it like, I could fast forward all the cutscenes all the episodes and just go straight to the gameplay I guess I, I, I don't know. <laughs> I really don't know. 
that's uh, the 9 1 done. It's currently in second place, I believe. I mean, I've not had the perfect run to go on. Finally, it was the turn of the psycho killer, the trickiest, the edgiest of the three. The P1. But I was so confident it would win, I was prepared to take a massive gamble. If the McLaren isn't the fastest, you two can knock my house down. What? Knock it down. What, your house? Yeah, and I mean that. That's how confident I am that that will be the fastest. That's a serious... You know we will do that. Yeah. It's a serious bet. Yeah. But fine. If that's not the fastest, yeah. we can knock your house down. Yep. You know where it is. You yes. both been. I'd love to knock it down. That's a big bet. That's a very big bet. My wife would kill me if I said that. Here we go. A lot riding on this. So now I don't have Jeremy Clarkson's income, so he's a multi, multi millionaire. So it's a bit different. <laughs> Just a bit. That, that felt. This is feeling very, very quick. This is like another level of car. Jeremy Clarkson might be correct. And yes, I already have seen season one, season two, but season three comes out very, very soon. Like, I think it's on the 18th of Jan, so this week. I'm looking forward to that. I'm going to sit down, I'm going to watch the first episode and absolutely love it. And relax, chill, get a beer, and enjoy it. Right, let's see if I can actually do this without hitting the wall. Please. So make sure I break enough. I've learned! I've learned! Oh wow, 140. Finally, on my last attempt. Third time lucky. Nailed it. This car is so good. Average of 140 miles an hour. Damn. With that, back to the tent. Thank you so much. Now, I want to make it absolutely plain because I know this matters to Anorax. All three cars were running on exactly the same sort of tires. Yes, same tires, same track, same driver. So the times are down to the cars. Yeah. Yep, and now it is time to reveal those times. And let me just make it absolutely clear. We don't know what they are. Yeah. The producers have kept them from us. They're don't top secret. Yeah. So let's put the scoreboard up and let's begin with the Ferrari, the Ferrari, I believe. Let's see what it did it in, please. 154.4. Okay. Oh, we don't know if that's any good, do no, we? No. But, yeah. <laughs> Let's move on and do the Porsche next. Let's have a look. What did the Porsche do it in? Oh, yes! 154.2! Yes! Yes! You see, you said it would mince the Porsche, and it didn't mince it. It was slower than the Porsche. I told you, it's just a melon ball. It's slower than my car, which was faster than your car. Yeah, point to it and it looks better. Yeah, it did. In my mirror, where oh, it belongs, sure. get it smaller. It's a melon ball. Lost. Hammond, what? calm down. Right. Because now we must bring up the time that really matters. Yeah. The one where a lot's at stake. The McLaren, <clears throat> the McLaren P1. Are you uh, nervous? No. Sure? No. A little bit? Sure. No, nervous. I'm not well, nervous. Why be nervous? Because you could get like a shopping trolley and keep all your things in it. <laughs> Make some new friends under a bridge somewhere. Hammond. I'd say sell your body, don't do that. Be quiet. Let's let's bring up the time of the P1. Here we go. Oh God, where is it? That is funny because you said the fastest, but it's not the fastest. It's the slow. Yeah. And on that terrible disappointment.
disappointment. I'm afraid it's time to end. Thank you all very much for coming. Thank you for watching, and we'll see you next week in Johannesburg. Goodbye. So I believe that is the end of season one. Yes, annoyingly, I did have a couple of silvers. I'll have to come back and definitely do those again. 100%. I, must, I think I was quite close on a couple of them, so... That was a little bit annoying. But if you guys want to see um, season two, season three, let me know and I can definitely do that. Um, I don't think they're available just yet. Multiplayer is also coming soon. Be interested to see how that works. Uh, but yeah, if you guys like the Grand Tour, if you guys like Top Gear, if you guys like these three guys, these, these three presenters, if you guys like cars, I recommend this. I think it's a good price. If it was more money, I would be like, uh, maybe not. But I think the price is right. And yeah, I enjoyed it. See you guys soon. You guys want to see season two, season three? Let me know. Leave a like, leave a comment, and bye bye.